Welcome to Waters World. I'm Jesse Waters. The Waters Awards. That is the subject of tonight's Waters Words. Now, in honor of the Academy Awards this weekend, our producers thought it would be fun to host our own award show. Let's begin with our first category. Best Actor in a Political Drama. Here are the nominees. Cory Booker at the Kavanaugh confirmation hearing. I'm going to release the email about racial profiling, and I understand that, that the penalty comes with potential ousting from the Senate. I openly invite and accept the consequences. This is about the closest I'll probably ever have in my life to an I am Spartacus moment. <laughs> Jussie Smollett on GMA. He said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched it back. The, the camera facing north, how is that my issue? I want that video found so badly. And I want a little gay boy who might watch this to see that I fought back. I'm pissed off. How do you not believe that? It's the truth. And Rachel Maddow on MSNBC. Trump administration. Oh, can we put up the graphic of this? Thank you. Do we have it? No. And the winner is... Jussie Smollett on GMA. That was a runaway winner right there, folks. All right. Next category. Best fight scene. Here are the nominees. Donald Trump versus Jim Acosta. That's Dad, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm Excuse me. President. Tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. Oh, Senator Marco Rubio versus radio talk show host Alex Jones. That's why the deplatform didn't work. But, but, yeah. you, but here's, here's the question. Here's a question. Hey, don't touch me again, man. I'm asking you not to touch me. Well, sure, I'm just bad at you nicely. I know, but I don't want to be. I don't, well, you you, want me to get arrested. I don't know who you are. It's not just going to take my First Amendment. You're not going to get arrested, man. You're not going to get arrested. I'll take care of myself. Oh, oh, he'll beat me up. Ooh, I'd love to see that. Senator Lindsey Graham versus all of the Democrats at the Kavanaugh hearing. What you've done to this guy, this is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. This is going to destroy the ability of good people to come forward because of this crap. And the winner is Trump versus Jim Acosta. And with an honorable mention for the White House intern who had to get her hands very dirty. All right. Next category, most politically correct. All right. Here are the nominees. The University of Maryland for creating a support group for white students who feel, quote, confused before, during, or after interactions with minorities, all right? Also nominated, Northeastern professor Susanna Walters, a gender, a gender studies professor who wrote that men should, quote, step away to make room for women as they, quote, have every right to hate you. And our final nominee, Minnesota State University professor Eric Sprankel, who said that the Virgin Mary did not give consent to become pregnant with Jesus Christ. Okay? And the winner is... Minnesota Professor Sprankle. That was an easy one. Sprankle, I thought there was an immaculate conception. How do you give consent for that? New category. Best political comedy. Here are the nominees. President Donald Trump. They go back home to mommy. They get punished when they get home. A show now headed by Sleepy Eyes Chuck Todd. He's a sleeping son of a bitch. Donang Richard Blumenthal. I watch him saying, we need the truth. If we don't have... And here's a guy who was saying people were dying all around him and he was never there. <laughs> CNN's Jim Acosta at the border. Here are some of the steel slats that the president's been talking about uh, right here. As a matter of fact, it's pretty tranquil down here. 
Of course it is, Jim. And Kanye West shocks the press in the Oval Office. Let me give this guy a hug right here. I'm married to a family that, um, you know, <laughs> not a lot of male energy going on. It's about when I put this hat on and made me feel like Superman. Non-political, no Put the beep on it. This is our president. It's true. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest plane. You, you are tasting a fine wine. It has multiple <laughs> notes to it. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hate to say this, Jim. Do you want to say something? <laughs> and the winner is... Donald Trump. <laughs> he wins it every year. It's just not fair. Jim was a close second. Last but not least, the dumbest political commentary. Our nominees are Beto O'Rourke. You know, would you, if you could, would you take the wall down now? Here. Yes. Like you have a wall. Absolutely. Knock it down. I'd take the wall and down. Do you think Taking the wall down. Elizabeth Warren. Now, the president likes to call my mom a liar. What do the facts say? The facts suggest that you absolutely have a Native American ancestor in your pedigree. Okay. Sure. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Millennials and people and, you know, Gen Z and all these folks that come after us are looking up and we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is... Your, your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. And, like, this is the war. This is our World War II. World's going to end how long? How many years? And the winner is... Pocahontas. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren, who revealed through a DNA test that she was not Native American, even though she claimed she was. That is it for the Waters Awards. I'd like to thank all of our winners for their outstanding work this year. And for the losers, better luck next time. In her endless quest to take your hard-earned money out of your hands, liberal lightning rod Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is sticking by her 70% tax plan on incomes over $10 million. Watch this. Why are you trying to take all our money away from us? We just signed the Showtime, and now you're trying to put the wild tax on a billionaire. What's wrong with you? If you make more than $10 million in one year, mm -hmm. which is a pretty good year. This, that's a damn good year. If you make <laughs> that's some El Chapo more than $10 million, Yes, seriously. If you make more than $10 million in one year, your 10 millionth and $1 gets taxed at 70%, which, by the way... We used to have marginal tax rates mm -hmm. under Republican presidents of 90%. It really comes down to the question of, isn't 10 million enough? Like, when does it stop? Joining me now, someone who knows a thing or two about your dollars and cents, the host of Mornings with Maria on the Fox Business Network and of Sunday Morning Futures right here on Fox News, Maria Bartiromo. Welcome to Waters World. Hey, it's great to be here in your world. There, you've been practicing, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> so, in my opinion, I think what she's doing was saying, isn't $10 million enough? I think that's un-American. Do you agree? It is un-American, Jesse. I mean, really, is it enough? What's enough? So is uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez going to be the judge of what's enough now? Should I check with her and how hard I should work and how much I might want to achieve in my life? I mean, it's basically put Putting a limit on people's achievements and their dreams. I thought the last time we talked, this was the American dream, right. that you could come from nothing and work as hard as you can and, and make money and as much success as you, as you can have. So It's going to be the American nightmare if she's in charge. Yeah. Uh, let, let's look at some celebrities who she believes have made enough money. Look, look at George Clooney. Now, we just looked this up. He made $239 million last year. Hell of a year, George. All right, so after taxes on that first, I think, $10 million, I mean, he's only taken home about $70 million, as opposed to 239 George needs the money. He needs the money. LeBron, is she going to tell LeBron James, who made $85.5 million last year, you know what, we're going to cut that in more than half. I dare her to tell LeBron 
he's made enough money. No, I don't think so, because she's basically just deciding who should make the money and who shouldn't. They're probably okay making that kind of money. But when you talk about a corporate CEO or a billionaire, well, then it becomes a really bad word. Yeah, because look at um, Bill Gates. I mean, the Gates Foundation has eliminated polio pretty much in the continent of Africa because of his generosity and, and, and success. Is she going to say, you know what? We're not going to eliminate polio. Right. Well, you know what? I, th I think you make a really good point because these kinds of rules and policies uh, where you are punishing the highest earners for er earning a lot of money, they have unintended consequences. So are we going to see the Ken Langones of the world still give $100 million like he just did to NYU Medical School so that eventually they can give out free medical school education? And I was just at NYU. I'm not going to tell you why I was there, but I was just at the hospital, and it was a beautiful place, and it was very well run. Thank you, I mean, Ken Langone. She, thank you, Ken. <laughs> and she went to Harvard, and Harvard has a huge endowment, and yeah. uh, she should want that. Now, we sound like people sucking up to billionaires. That's how the Democrats are going to run. They're going to run on attacking billionaires. How does the Republican Party combat that smear that Republicans are just the party of the rich? Well, first of all, it is on american like you said. I mean, you, you shouldn't crush people's ability to come from nothing, work hard, and make what they can make. But I think one way that the Republicans really need to hit at this is you have to address the underlying problem that the left is bringing up, and that is there is uh, income inequality still. Well, how do they address that? The capitalism lifts people out of poverty. That's what we've been seeing. I would say that the Republicans need an education policy. They need to come out big on education policy. Look, our workers in this country are being attacked. They've got AI on the right. They've got China on the left. They've got illegals in the middle. And they all want our jobs. And that's just a fact. I mean, robotics is taking over. I think we need to be teaching our students about machine learning, about AI, about robotics at a young age. But then you're going to face the teacher's union. Oh, they're not going to like that. Those are scary but people. But that's one of the issues. This goes back to education, yeah. Jesse. You know that. So I see what you're saying. So instead of focusing on taking wealth away from the rich people and redistributing it, because that money never gets into their hands. It's not like you're taking money from LeBron and giving it to a poor person. That's, that's right. not how it works. You're saying the Republicans need to come out with an education push to help Americans yeah. and lift workers us up. lift each other up that's with right. their own skills. Yeah, so that they can have their own skills to get the job, to work really hard, and make as much money as they can. So is Let's it, put them on a good playing field to do that. Is it hypocritical when you have someone like Elizabeth Warren, who's worth close to $10 million? Yeah, she is. Or Bernie Sanders, who's got three homes. Uh, they're all a mess, though. Uh, my Secret Service friends say that it's just like an episode of Hoarders oh, over God. there. Well, doesn't Nancy Pelosi own a vineyard? Yeah, she's got the vineyard. And do they look like hypocrites saying, oh, you know, let's tax the rich when they're sitting pretty? Yeah, well, a, a bit, yes. And, and But that's why they have this new tagline. The new talking point is for the people. Our program is for the people. I want to know what people <laughs> want people? a trillion, a trillion <laughs> plus dollar people? plan. The American people? Yeah, that's right. But the people, for a green plan, and that makes absolutely no sense, or for Medicare for All, which basically destroys the entire private insurance industry. Well, you mentioned the Green Plan. Ocasio-Cortez was asked about eliminating cow flatulence. Here is what she said. Roll it. Mm. My Twitter mentions I'm getting a lot of references about cow farts, mm. and I think that's a reference to your Green New Deal. we got to address factory farming. Maybe we shouldn't be eating a hamburger for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, let's keep Can it slow real. Down? Yeah, I mean, hey. I'll be at Shake Shack. I'll be at Shake Shack. Okay? <laughs> but, um, but we have to take a look at everything. And what we need to realize is that climate change is about every choice that we make in our lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't come after the hamburgers. No more hamburgers Dangerous. for you, Jesse. No soup. Um, look, I mean, obviously this green plan has been panned and actually exposed for what it is. It makes no sense. Let me quote the Wall Street Journal uh, on, on her plan saying that... Uh, she wants the U.S. to be carbon neutral within 10 years. Non-carbon sources provide only 11 percent of energy today. That would mean a complete remake of the electric power system. She wants all buildings in New York to be redone. I mean, it's absolute pie-in-the-sky dreams. Donald Jesse. Trump, the Big Mac president, is going to feast on these people if they come for the burgers. <laughs> Maria Bartiromo, everybody. So we are debuting a new segment on Waters World. It's called What We Learned About Democrats This Week.
Kamala Harris kicking things off in New Hampshire. She wants to get rid of Columbus Day. Would you support efforts on a federal level to change Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day? I appreciate and applaud your point and your effort and count me in on support. There goes the Italian vote. <laughs> By the way, do we still get a three-day weekend? Bernie Sanders officially jumping into the 2020 race. While many socialists are probably thrilled, a video from the past may point to his future plans for America. You know, it's funny. Sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. In other countries, people don't line up for food. The rich get the food and the poor starve to death. Okay. Speaking of things that sound good on paper but fail to live up, video of Beto O'Rourke from his punk rock past. Beto here rocking out on rhythm guitar back in 2003, wearing a onesie and a sheep mask. But that's not the only questionable costume the Texas native has donned. Beto here dressed to impress, wearing a dress? But even scarier. FBI statistics revealing Minneapolis, Minnesota as the top hotbed for terror here in America. FBI stats showing 45 Somalis have left the city to join ISIS or al-Shabaab, and another dozen arrested while trying to leave for ISIS. By the way, Minnesota's 5th Congressional District, which includes Minneapolis, repped by none other than freshman firebrand Rep. Omar, who has defended wannabe terrorists in the past, not making any connections, just pointing out the facts. Joining me now, counselor to the president, Kelly Ann Conway. How are you doing, Kelly Ann? Hi, Jesse. So I wanted to play some sound of Senator Harris talking about reparations and her support of them. Listen to this. America has a history of 200 years of slavery. Mm -hmm. We had Jim Crow. We had legal segregation in America for a very long time. People aren't starting out on the same base in terms of their ability to succeed. And so we have got to, to recognize that and give people the, a lift up. So you are for some type of yes, I am. reparation? Okay. Yes, I am. Okay, more craziness from the Democrats, Kellyanne. I don't see why she doesn't sponsor a bill. She's a senator. Put it up to a vote. She should do that. Actually, some experts say this could cost trillions of dollars, and none other than our first African-American president, Barack Obama, did not show support for this when asked many different times, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, other top Democrats. Uh, I think Kamala Harris, after having a really good rollout and really good fundraising numbers, has been stumbling quite a bit. I agree. Um, I'd say the four S's really quickly. Smollett, as in the guy she called her friend, one of the kindest, gentlest people she knows who's been turned out. <laughs> Uh, now, he's, he's the target of a criminal investigation. Um, socialism, she said she's for Medicare for all. How many people work in the in private insurance industry in her home state of California would lose their jobs if we had Medicare for all? 180 million people or so would lose their private insurance. Um, also, I would say the smoking. Her own father came out against her saying, how dare you stereotype our Jamaican heritage by saying smoking pot is okay. <laughs> and then, of course, shopping because uh, we want female <laughs> candidates to all be looked upon as serious. So she went shopping right. for the Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor jacket with female reporters. Yeah, and the reporters were helping her try it on and, and yucking it up. I can't imagine if the roles were reversed there. You brought up Jesse Smollett. Um, you know, alleged attack. Everybody punch in the face. And then these other hate crime hoaxes and Jesse Smollett, which gets so much attention, there's just very unbalanced coverage. Well, it's completely unbalanced. And look, uh, people, people, there are always going to be liars out there, but there are enablers in the mainstream media really what sh should concern everyone because people are charged with delivering us the news, not their opinions, not their likes and retweets on Twitter, not what they hope is the truth, but what is the truth. You just saw the man be assaulted, a crime committed against him on the videotape. We all, we all know what we see. And yet, uh, when Jesse Smollett came out and gave his account, all the headlines, all the comments, none of them said Jesse Smollett says he was attacked. It says he is a victim of a racist, homophobic attack by MAGA people. Very few people, if any, in the media used the words alleged or even just attributed it as his account. The only question they had was, is it a hate crime? And look what's happened there. Yeah. So what's happening is the whole first facts, truth, truth, truth crowd, 
really invents their own according to who the perpetrator is, who the yep. victim is. But I want that guy found who punched and assaulted. That is a crime what you saw. That guy should be found, expelled from the school, and held to account in California. All right. Thank you very much, Kellyanne. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Jesse. Coming up, a Waters World exclusive. Or someone black. I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot much more. Race, just one of the many parts of Jesse Smollett's story to quickly unravel and blow up in his face. The actor add on a $100,000 bond charged with felony disorderly conduct for filing a false police report, facing up to three years in prison if convicted. And he's been dropped by the show Empire for the final two episodes of the season. Here with reaction, former deputy assistant to President Trump, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, the author of the book, Why We Fight. So, Dr. Gorka, he's a, just a greedy, lying con artist, and the media was either too stupid to check the story out, or they didn't want to check the story out because it was too big to fail. How do you see it? Never let facts get in the way of a good left-wing narrative. Right. That's what we saw with the Covington schoolboys. That's what we saw in the reverse uh, with this individual. Uh, look, on the left, reality is optional, Jesse. You know that better than anyone else. The stunning thing is this individual who has been caught on camera with his uh, accomplices buying the material for... <laughs> not guilty. Right. I love the check, too. It's what was that? Didn't Jerry Springer pay a prostitute with a check? You never pay a prostitute with a check. You never commit a crime with a check. Yeah, I think Charles Barkley mentioned that on TNT yes. the other day. Let's listen to that. America, let me just tell you something. What's that? Uh, do not commit crimes with checks. <laughs> Come on, man. You cannot, if you're going to break the law, do not write a check. Because you're writing a check that what? No. For high care cash. <laughs> Yo, man, you cannot you cash up. <laughs> hey, get cash, man. But you know what? It's funny, but it's not because he knew that the media would buy his hoax. And Robin Roberts at GMA went along with it. Many of the people across cable went along with it. And everybody like you and I were thinking from the jet get-go, this story doesn't make sense, but we didn't say anything because if we had said something, we would have been destroyed by the left-wing media as uh, racists and as conspiracy theorists. Just for asking questions. Look Jesse, I now have a, a national radio show. I didn't comment on this case until this week because I wanted the facts. Right. I didn't jump on some narrative bandwagon. But yes, look, there's two very serious things about this. In the week since this hoax was perpetrated, 31 people were murdered in Chicago. In 26 of those cases, they haven't made an arrest. Not one arrest. In the meantime, 24 detectives were being wasted on this fraud. Secondly, um, this individual has actually perpetrated a hate crime because he's blamed white Trump supporters. This is a man who is a minority member and a homosexual and is in a TV show or was until this week. In dozens of countries around the world, this person would never have had the opportunities that he's had in America. In dozens of countries, his sexual preferences would have led to him being a criminal. And in many countries in the Middle East, he would have risked execution just for being a homosexual. He, yeah, and he now took for he's granted he, he everything wants, he had in this country, yes. all the opportunities. And I believe he owes every single one of Donald Trump's supporters an apology, all 60 million of them, because that's who he actually framed. You mentioned earlier, too, you want to wait until the facts come out. The Democrats didn't do it with Kavanaugh. They didn't do it with Covington. They didn't do it with Jussie Smollett. And it's, you know, innocent until proven guilty if you're on their side and guilty as charged if you're not yes. on their side. And it's totally against what the founding principles of this country are. And it's getting to the Democrats in a lot of trouble because now the Democratic presidential candidates have fallen for hoaxes. And the media, what little credibility they have, is shot. Give you the last word. 
Yeah, just on Friday, Kamala Harris, who originally in a tweet called this a modern day lynching, she, she tweeted out a statement on Friday. Nowhere, nowhere did she apologize for jumping on the bandwagon and call this a lynching. This is a person who thinks she should be the next president of the United States. That's everything you need to know about the left, as my good friend yeah. Chris Pond and she's said. A pro and she was a if, prosecutor, so she should know. Yes. You know what right. to look for when people Jesse. are perpetrating fraudulent acts. Uh, Dr. Gorka, I've got to run, but as always, <laughs> I got to run. As always, listen to Dr. Gorka's radio show. You won't be disappointed. All right. Up Thanks, next, Jesse. an expert in hate crime hoaxes. He has this huge list. You are not going to believe what he's got. Southern border, building a wall. We will build the wall build a great wall along the southern border build that wall build that wall build that wall build the wall make america great again political catchphrases can make or break a candidate as a powerful rallying cry here to look at the effectiveness of political phrasing pollster frank lutz all right frank you're the best at this in the business when the president says build the wall and he's talking about the wall constantly is that a good move, or is there another word that you would like him to use? Well, I don't choose what words he uses. He should know that 41% of Americans want to build that wall. A majority in the uh, lower mid-50s want to build a barrier. Over 70% want a combination of technology and people and some sort of barrier. So he the should be saying, build that barrier. <laughs> build that barrier. I no, but you know what? This is more than an applause line. And if he wants to go from 41% job approval up to 50%, he's got the right idea. But in this case, Build a Wall appeals to his base. Most of the viewers who are watching right now. Right. But he could be doing so much better if he expanded the communication. Okay. Um, also, a phrase used constantly by the left and the right, uh, collusion, but also the witch hunt, which the president likes to say. Let's listen. This is a pure and simple witch hunt. Phony witch hunt. The Russian witch hunt. The witch hunt that's been going on forever. No collusion, no nothing. Zero collusion. No collusion at all. Okay. Collusion and witch hunt and hoax. What do you make of those? Well, I don't think most Americans knew what the word collusion was until about a year ago. Right. So this has been very good for America's uh, uh, vocabulary. Right. The the issue is is that these people are putting politics over over people. They're they're. I, if I were advising him on this, I, I don't have a better word than witch hunt. I don't, you think witch hunt is the right phrase? Direct. For what he's trying to communicate, I think that works best because we all understand when something is unfair and something is improper. Okay, good. Um, the Democrats like to say there's going to be a Green New Deal, I guess playing off the old FDR phrase, but then adding green in front of it. Uh, how do you think that's working? It's just beginning to start. I know it's working well. We did a survey on it, and 80% of Americans thought it was a good idea. They have no idea what it is, but a Green <laughs> New Deal, it, it works it for them. I'm going to give you another example. Medicare for All yeah. has over 60% support, only 25% opposition, because the public believes that Medicare works and they want to share, they basically want to share the wealth. So it, at, in this case, the Democrats have a very effective uh, labeling of this issue. But when they learn the truth about it, when they learn the details, I think the public will change its mind. All right. The devil is in the details. All right, Frank. You, thank you very much. Thank you. A Kentucky man held at gunpoint just for wearing his MAGA hat. He joins me next on Waters World.